Hello everyone in Cyber World. Welcome back to another video. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Richard and this is our channel we call Poor Man's DIY. This week's video we're going to show you how to use the software for the Xtool M1. We've seen many questions on Facebook and other social media about using the software for the M1. This week, we're gonna teach you how to use the software for the M1 at a beginner's level. So let's get right into it. First, we're gonna show you the basic settings for the software. Click on the settings and you can set your measurements to millimeters or inches. Click check for updates to make sure you have the most current version. Next, we're going to show you how to add the shapes and what we can do with them. Click on the shape and choose the design that you wish to use. Using your mouse, you can change the size of the image. You can also change the size of the image by typing in the width and the height. By clicking the lock icon, you can change the width and height independently. Using your mouse, you can also rotate the image. You can also rotate by typing in the value. To use a line, rectangle, or circle, click on the insert icon. When using multiple images, you can easily line them up because the software will show you where the middle is. Okay, I'm not going to go into full details, but uh, just to explain vector a little bit. Uh, most images that you're familiar with, whether it be in a camera or even in the computer itself, are based on tiny little dots. If you were to expand on something, you will see little dots that uh, compose a picture. Vector uses a different technology, and so it's not based on dots. So when you draw a line on there, it is a nice clean line, um, and so you get nice edges on that. So for, for imaging and for software such as uh, we're using for cutting out uh, things on your laser, uh, it's a good idea if you can use something that has a vector on it because it is going to be much cleaner and it can avoid any tiny dots that might show up on your image itself. Here's a quick look at how you can use the vector icon on the software. And now for adding the text, this is pretty straightforward. So let's show you how to do this. Begin by clicking on the text icon. By going to the text box, type in the text that you would like to use. Here is where you can make changes to the font. And now let's get into some uh, additional features that are actually pretty cool. Clicking the image icon allows you to import your own image to work with. When importing a very large file, you can work with it in its original size or have the software fit to scale. 
After adjusting the image size to your liking, click on the edit button. Here's the really cool part. Click on the black background to instantly remove it. You can click anywhere else in the image to remove that color as well. Now click the save button on the bottom right to return to the canvas. You now have an image you can engrave. But what if you actually want to cut out this exact shape? So here's what you do. Select the image by clicking on it, then click on the outline icon at the top. By default, a 2mm offset border will be displayed. Change the 2 to 0 and click OK. The actual border will then be created. Click and hold, then drag the image and you will be able to see the border image you created. Now with the image of the border, you can use either your laser or the razor blade to cut out an image you just created. For this next feature, add any shape to your canvas. Using the array icon, you can easily make multiple images. Click on the plus sign to duplicate even more images in columns and rows. When you have multiple images, you can use the Align icon. And now to show you a feature called Grouping. Once again, when working with multiple images, begin by highlighting all the images. Then click the group icon at the top. This allows you to move all your images around the canvas as a group, instead of one by one. If you ever need to flip an image, use the reflect icon. And now to connect to the device so Mr. Poorman can teach you more. For this next fun feature, I cut out a snowflake from a piece of wrapping paper, then placed it in the M1. Click the Extract button and the M1 takes a picture. Select the Crop button, then highlight the area of the captured picture that you wish to work with. Then click the check mark. And now we have an image that we can work with as we did when we imported an image of our own. In this case, because the background didn't entirely disappear, use the eraser feature to clean up the rest of the background. Because this is just a test, I erased haphazardly and didn't do a very good job, but hopefully you get the gist of it. Once you click the Save button, you create an image that you can work with, just as we did when we imported our own image. And now we're ready to cut out a snowflake. This next feature is awesome. It allows you to replicate an image or text at the click of a button. In this case, click on the text and then move up and click on Smart Fit at the top. And boom, just like that, it's added the same text on all the other objects. A couple of them needed a little adjustments, but it was so much quicker than adding the text one by one. Now that we've shown you how to work with text and images, we're going to show you how to use the software to communicate with the M1 to give it instructions to either score, engrave, or cut the objects that you want. Using the drop-down menu, you must instruct the M1 if you're going to be engraving on a flat surface, a cylindrical surface, or using the cutting blade. If you're using materials obtained through Xtools, you'll be able to use the drop-down menu and select that particular item and all the settings will be set up for you automatically. If you're using a different type of material, click the Auto Measurement button. If your material has been placed on the triangular prisms, you must identify it here and then click the auto measure. 
For training purposes, we're going to return to a pre-identified material. As seen here, the power, the speed, and the number of passes have already been set up. If you use unidentified material, you will need to figure out these settings on your own. This can be done by testing, testing, and testing. Once all your settings have been made, press the process button on the bottom right and you're off to the races. By clicking on projects, there are pre-made projects that show you how to make them. By clicking on shop, you can shop to your heart's content. Last but not least, click on support for additional assistance. So for those of you who had uh, jumped right in and bought an M1 uh, but didn't know anything about the software, we hope this was helpful to you. Actually, next week we're going to start making some projects. So until then, bye-bye.